you. Good to see you, Jane. Great to see you, Peter. I'm super excited about this School of the Prophets that's coming. Yeah, up. can't wait to get you back in New Jersey. I know you have roots here. I took you uh, back to your hometown or your family's hometown when yeah. you visited a long time ago. But uh, yeah, I know my, that. My mom, ahead, and dad, my mom and dad grew up in that part of the that neck yeah. of the woods. So I always love coming up to be with you guys because I know it's kind of a coming back to my roots. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job. I have to say. Well, <laughs> they should be proud of their daughter. But I did hear your testimony about how your dad was a scientist and he, he really didn't necessarily go along with the God idea, but that you kept on persistently giving him the word. And then eventually, I guess it was his brother, maybe, that he actually ended up witnessing to. I don't remember yeah. the details, but his brother in law. Yeah, it was awesome. Great I'm story. Believers now. So that's yeah, awesome. amazing story. But my dad took 25 years of my mother witnessing to him. Before wow. he finally softened up, he she was a bulldog, would not let go. Tough guy. He was he was a tough guy. So we want to um, you know help give people a window into why they should think about signing up for this class. It starts February 26th. It'll run 11 weeks, two sessions, one on a Sunday night, then on a Monday night. Everything will be online. They can see it from Alaska, where you're going to be going soon. Um, so anybody around the world can can register, and then. They'll be able to look at anything that we do online afterwards, as long as they have that login code that they registered. Um, so the Hammond family, this is one of the things Elizabeth asked me to ask you is just talk about the impact that Bishop Hammond has had on the Hammond family and what's been going on for decades now at CI. And this idea of activation and importation that I really first heard expanded upon when I was exposed to the teachings that you guys have been doing for so long. Well, my father-in-law, Dr. Bill Hammond, has been in ministry next year to be 70 years. We're nice. going to be having his 70-90 celebration, 70 mm -hmm. years in ministry, 90 years alive. Oh, wow. We'll be having that next year. He's still going strong in ministry. Um, but he really is considered to be the father of the modern prophetic movement. Wherever we travel all over the world, people know who our father, my father-in-law is. Uh, they've read his books. He's written 14 or 15 books that are all about the prophetic, the apostolic, the church, what the, the church that God is raising up um, to, to bring Jesus back. And for, I would say, the last 40 years, we have been very focused on teaching, training, activating maturing and releasing let me give that to you again teaching training activating maturing and releasing prophets apostles and prophetic people um, really throughout the body of christ people have been very comfortable with the idea that there were uh, pastors teachers and evangelists and there's always schools for those schools of ministry for pastors teachers and evangelists but really our heart was 40 years ago to see god fully restore the anointing of the ministry gifts of the apostles and prophets mm -hmm. ephesians 2 20 says that the church is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone but the historical church basically we like to say dispensationally depleted <laughs> apostles and prophets right said they were for the first century and uh, we no longer need them in today's right. church but the truth of the matter is if you build a building and uh, that and you build it on a foundation you don't someday decide you no longer need the foundation right. we absolutely need the foundation of apostles and prophets and so 40 years ago we started really folk uh, really focused um, ministry of, of teaching, training, and equipping people to hear the voice of God, how to be activated as a prophet or a prophetic minister. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I just want to say that, that the school of the prophets is not just for people that are fivefold ministry prophets. Mm -hmm. um, this is for people that hear the voice of God, people that are activating the gifts of the Holy Spirit and to know how to use them properly. Um, and so we really started even 40 years ago, writing manuals, um, pr producing books, materials, training seminars, which are ongoing even today, mm -hmm. um, really teaching people to hear the voice of God, teaching mm -hmm. people how to carry the anointing in your life, the prophetic anointing in your life with strong character. Mm -hmm. uh, Bishop Hammond teaches on what we call the 10 M's, which um, uh, starts at, you know, talks about your manhood, your ministry, your message, your marriage, how you handle money, how are your manners, how are your motives, 
that was seven. Pretty no, good. We always yeah. say whatever, whatever you've left out are probably what you need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> so God help me. Well, but, I mean, and it's a, it's about God honors character over gifting. Yeah. You could have the gifting, exactly. but if it's in a tainted vessel, it's a problem. Exactly. But we try to teach both. We try to say, you know, here's how we can activate your gifts so that you can hear the voice of God. You can prophesy, you can heal the sick, you can cast out devils, you can raise the dead here, operate in the supernatural, but you better have good character, yeah. you know, because Balaam gave a true prophetic word in Numbers 23, but Jesus called him a false prophet because mm -hmm. he had bad character. So right. we have to understand that God wants to train a company of prophets and prophetic people that have the character of Christ, that have the maturity of the spirit, but then also have the spirit of wisdom and revelation partnered together mm -hmm. so that we're able to effectively minister and effectively dispense the the revelation that God gives to us. Yeah, and that um, idea that hearing God more clearly that applies to every Christian because who would not want to do not be more discerning, not be more prayerful to pray at all times and ask the Lord into every situation and and learn how to hear His voice clearly. But I could tell you, having grown up in this part of the world, which is pretty skeptical about the mystical things but also very money driven and logical and engineering and wall street and all of that. It sounded a little bit too fluffy. Like there were, you couldn't put your hand on it. Uh, but now that I married Trisha and I've been married 37 years and she's a very strong prophet. I, I was won over by the way she lived her life by how I saw her so hungry for the word. And I would make a, a decision about something in our marriage early on. And, and she said, well, what did God say? <laughs> and I would say, well, I didn't have to pray about that one. That was easy. You know, I do this for a living. And she's like, I don't, I thought I married a Christian. Like, what do you mean? You didn't ask. You have to ask. <laughs> That's kind of a composite of, of how I learned. But then I realized she was making much better decisions than I was because she prayed about everything. Right. And, right. And she didn't move until she heard the Lord. And, I, and she'd say, I have a check about that. And I'd be like, what do you mean you have a check? Like, that doesn't mean anything. That's mumbo jumbo. What's the check? I don't know what the check is. I'm just telling you, don't do it yet. <laughs> and then, of course, you bump your head and you do it. And like, okay, maybe I should pay more attention. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way. But it's also kind of in the in the region here, idol idolatry of intellect. Mm. And, and B.B. Warfield was one of the guys that wrote about dispensationalism at Princeton at the turn of the century, 1900, roughly. And, and he said, we don't need, we don't need the Holy Spirit anymore because God gave us the Roman empire. Oh, Effectively, God. we can, oh, we can God. rely on the, on, on the empire. And I think, you know, I love John Wimber's approach to all of this because he did it out of love. He didn't criticize people who disagreed with him. He just gave them prophetic words. <laughs> and there was nothing to argue about. Or if they didn't believe in healing, he would pray for the sick and they'd get healed and there was nothing, nothing to argue with. And and we tried, you know, we, we saw what happens when you try to argue with smart people. They can keep on going and going, but just do it, right? So that's, that's part of this impartation idea that we're not just filling a notebook with notes and learning about it. We want to leave this school being able to be more discerning and hear the voice of the Lord and exercise those muscles, right? by reason of use, then we become more proficient at it. And you, Absolutely. you do feel silly sometimes when you're learning anything, right? Like, what if I make a mistake? What if I say the wrong thing? But like, maybe you can address that a little bit because I know you've been doing this a long time. <laughs> we have been, we've been training people in the prophetic, like I said, for the last 40 years. And, you know, I think that maybe some of the, the disconnect for the body of Christ um, comes in when people don't understand, number one, God has given you his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came with a set of gifts for your life. Um, mm -hmm. it, your gift mix is going to be different for everybody, but he's given you access to all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, don't say, well, I have a word of knowledge. I don't have the gift of healing. No, you're given mm -hmm. access to all nine mm -hmm. gifts of the Holy Spirit. But then also knowing how to carry those gifts with integrity, how to carry those gifts with wisdom. Um, you know, we, you and I were talking earlier and I, and I said, you know, I had, I have a gift of discernment. And when I first started having this gift activated in me, um, I didn't always, I was kind of like, Trisha was kind of like, well, I don't have words for what I'm feeling, mm -hmm. but I can sense that something's not right here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's wrong, but I know that something's not right. 
And so I, I, I wasn't always wise with what I did because sometimes what I did is I would get into judge, judgmentalism or criticism, or I would X people out. And I jokingly say, I wanted to shoot people and tell God they died. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was not yeah, very yeah. mercy motivated at all in the way that I approach things, but, you know, growing in wisdom, growing in the character of Christ, growing in the understanding that gifts are given to edify. And yeah. how can I take this very pure gift even if you see negative things, even if you see negative, wicked, wicked, horrible things, how do you take that gift and translate what you say or what you do into something that is building and not tearing down? And right. so that's really, I think, the benefit of having a school of the prophet is that in each of the different classes, you're going to be hearing from people that are experts in their prophetic field. You're going to be hearing from people that have walked the journey of maybe not doing everything right. Um, I'm certainly going to talk about my journey of not doing everything right mm -hmm. um, in regards to discernment. But, right. you know, it's, it's sometimes by learning what other people have gone through to learn that a different path has actually been paved so that, right. the, that the people, the students don't have to go back and, and reinvent the wheel. They mm -hmm. don't have to go back and, and make the same mistakes that I made. They don't have to go back and, and get into the same struggles that I got into. They can just actually just embrace the gift, glean the wisdom that's necessary to operate in it with integrity and with a Christ likeness and actually then be able to see the, the fruitfulness, the power, the impact that actually comes by utilizing a well-stewarded gift. So that's really our heart for the School of the Prophets is really to see everybody come up to a higher level of hearing the voice of God and being able to see signs, wonders, and miracles follow after them, like Mark chapter 16 says, these signs will follow mm -hmm. those that believe. So um, I think that it's, it's not just for prophets, it's for prophetic people, it's for believers that want to come to a higher operation of hearing the voice of God and utilizing their gifts. Right. Unless the Lord builds a house, we're just going to labor in vain. I learned that one the hard way. So, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So then uh, one of the verses that came to me while I was thinking about this uh, conversation today is Job 14, 7 talks about there is hope for a tree because even if it's cut down to the stump at the scent of water, it springs back to life. And, and there's so many people that I meet that feel like they've plateaued as Christians and they're doing their devotions, but they've lost a little bit of the edge, right? And I was talking Sunday about, you know, in Revelation when it says, Ephesus, you're doing well. You grew a big church, but you lost your first love. Mm -hmm. Something happens where it's not lukewarm, but it's not hot either. It's something in the middle. And, and the prophetic has always been that spark. I can remember standing behind somebody who was receiving a prophetic word and the intensity with which it was coming. And I knew her story. And I also knew the man who was giving it never met her before. And I felt the love of God pouring out to this woman who was in a very broken situation. And I said, you, you know, you, that's that scent of water, no matter how dry things are, no matter how bad it might be getting one spark like that can cause you to awaken, which again, that's part of that impartation is like, I want this. I, I don't want just to have to go to somebody else. I want to live like this. If this is one of the things available why wouldn't we want this? Because it could turn a whole situation around. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I've been the recipient of that word that I just needed. Like, man, I was in a place that I just needed something from God. And what mm -hmm. happens is your faith just goes, I mean, through the roof, your faith, mm -hmm. when you, especially if you're receiving something from somebody that, you know, has no idea anything right. about your situation. But then I've also been used of the Lord to minister to so many people at, at critical times in their life that has completely reversed the course that they were on and made God real. One of the things I like to say is that the prophetic should make God real. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I was in a, I was in a grocery store line and the Lord told me to, to minister to the lady behind me. And I was like, Oh, I don't want to, <laughs> I, was, I was busy. I was focused on other stuff. And I just kind of, I was like, okay, Lord. And I just, you know, just quickly listened to the Lord, you know, because we've honed the ability to listen to the mm -hmm. Lord. And he gave me three very brief little words for her, just three very kind of pinpointed things. And I turned around and struck up a conversation with her. And I said, you know, while I was standing in line, I just began to pray for you. And I felt like God wanted you to know this and he wanted you to know this and he wanted you to know this. And her eyes immediately filled with tears. And, 
And she leaned forward and she said, who are you? Right. <laughs> and, I said, and I said, well, I'm just a believer. I believe that God speaks today. And I, I felt like he wanted you to know that. And she said, you know what? I'm a believer too. She said, but, and we've been praying, my husband and I've been praying about those three things, but I actually said to my husband this morning, I don't even know if God hears us mm -hmm. because we're not seeing any answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. so, and she, and I said, well, what do you think now? And she says, yes, I believe that God hears us. And so it brought her faith to a new place. And it, and it brought that spark as you were talking about that gave her the hope to be able to right. continue to move forward in believing God for something that he has for them, but that it's not, it's a not yet season. So and I your, your yeah. faith rose too, because yeah. you, you, you know, you heard correctly, but then you start to think you're convicted. Like, Oh, I almost didn't say anything. Yes. Right? And, and then I think of all the other times that I'm thinking, oh, God, have I been mm -hmm. obedient to you? Because right. look, one word from God can change everything. Right. Right. And so how important is it that us as believers, not even as a prophet, but just as believers, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And so mm -hmm. it can be the normal part of every believer's life to hear the voice of God not just for ourselves, but to hear the voice of God for others. Acts chapter two says, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, okay? Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we should be having dreams, we should be having visions, and we should be prophesying. What is prophesying? Right. Prophesying is not saying, yay, thus saith the Lord. Prophesying is just hearing what God says mm -hmm. and then saying it, like in the grocery store. That's the great thing about having 11 weeks and all different speakers coming, they all have different anecdotal evidence of how the Lord did it, but no two people have to be the same. And I know, again, like growing up in a more religious culture, it was like, pray at all times. How could I pray? I have a job. I have to work. And, and you didn't have the right understanding of what that meant. But like we would call what you just described at the grocery store, a sliding door moment. Right. There's the door opens up quickly and it's an opportunity. But if you don't step through it, it closes. You leave the store and you missed it. But how many times is the Lord speaking to us throughout the day? And right. it says we might be entertaining an angel. Right. Like that's pretty convicting that we walk <laughs> right past somebody and we didn't even ask him. Do you want me to say anything to this person? Right. Because the practical side of you, the Martha piece wants to get everything done. Right. And Mary's right. sitting at his feet and like she chose the better thing, right? Well, and so that's where I think that the training gives us the confidence that when that sliding door opens, what we've done is we've we've trained ourselves. It's like it's like somebody's not gonna go out and play an NFL game, you know, tomorrow if they've not been through the training process and, mm -hmm. and have the years of proving. And so right. I think a lot of times um we're expecting as pastors and leaders, we're expecting our people to get out there and do the supernatural stuff. And we've never trained them. We've never provided an environment for them to step out and to try and to miss it if necessary right. until they learn to fine tune and hear the voice of God. And so um, that's why, you know, some people object to, we have a school of the prophets and people, you know, we caught all kinds of stuff like, oh, you can't make somebody a prophet. Well, no, you can't make somebody a prophet that's not a prophet, but you can train up a prophetic generation mm -hmm. and every single believer should be a part of the prophetic generation. Every believer needs to hear the voice of God. So we, uh, as the, as the, the ministers, our uh, imperative is to provide an opportunity and an atmosphere for people to be trained so that when they're the one that's in the grocery store line, or when they're the one that's sitting next to somebody on an airplane, or when they're the one that God says, minister to your waitress, that you have been trained to do it. You've heard the stories of how to do it. And it's very, very easy then to step in with a confidence and a courage to say, you know what, I can do it too. Because it's motivated by love, it right? I mean, that's the thing. You, you have something that's a valuable, to, that should be a value to this person. So that helps take the edge off the angry side. You know, I remember being with Dale Mast out on the street, just witnessing many years ago in, in another country and he got a word about somebody that, you know, was probably too sexually promiscuous. But instead of being angry about it and trying to judge her, he said, I can tell that you have a high propensity for love. And it was just a beautiful way to take something that could have come across as very angry and judgmental and, and speak to the, to the side of it in her heart that, that made it edifying instead of angry. Even Jesus with the woman at the well 
Right. When when did he know that she was in sin? Probably when he first sat down, but he didn't start with that. He he built a relationship with her first. That's the nuance and the training piece of this is just because you hear the word doesn't mean you're going to deliver it in that perfect way that God would want you to, unless you try this for a while. Right, exactly right. And that's where I think that we've got to learn how to hear. We've got to learn how to discern. We've got to learn how to process. We've got to learn is this something that I'm just supposed to pray about and not even share? Because I think that that's a big piece as well, that sometimes Mm -hmm. we jump in and we start talking about things that God's saying, listen, I told you that so that you could pray. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I think we have to know that as well. That's in, in my piece, we'll be talking about discernment. And all of that is discerning the voice of God, discerning the voice of the enemy, discerning angels, discerning demons. What do you do when you discern something happening in somebody else? How do you handle that? You know, mm-hmm. what's the practical aspect of ministering to somebody other that, that you've discerned? And so I think that all of us, we need to give ourselves permission to grow into areas, kind of like you saying, you know, this was, n- this was nowhere on your roadmap. This was nowhere in your paradigm at all. And, uh, and that's where when we start getting under the spout where the glory comes out, we start hearing mm-hmm. from other teachers, it breaks mm-hmm. a whole new possibility open. Um, when I wrote Dreams and Visions back in the mid 90s, um, I didn't know of any other books on the subject that were out there um, because people didn't talk about, oh, I had a spiritual dream. I had a spiritual vision. Mm-hmm. But as God begins to reveal different aspects of himself um, decade by decade, We get greater permission to hear, to see, to know, Mm -hmm. and then to process the things that we're receiving from the Lord. And so I wrote the book to basically say, hey, this has been, this is in the word from Genesis to Revelation that let's look at the word, let's look at the Holy Spirit, and let's Mm -hmm. grow in this together so that we can all come to a place where we're hearing the voice of God to a greater accuracy. Yeah. And I I look back now and I remember meeting Tricia and knowing that there was a spark there, but I didn't make the connection to how much time she was praying and and how much she was soaking herself in the word and then also exercising those gifts. So uh, then I met Chuck Pierce, Cindy Jacobs, Dutch Sheets. I mean, he wrote the book on intercession and I, I I had never heard any of that before. And most of these people started out by leading prayer groups, right? They they just were getting together to intercede and pray. And, you know, you mentioned at one point, either on or off air today, that you can affect a whole region. And that was his thing. And she was going on these trips with Chuck all over the world as one of his prayer ministers. And I'm like, well, what did he talk about? Like, what was the, what was the topic of the conference? And she looked at me like, you don't get it. Like, we're going there to break open the region and take authority over those strongholds that are there. And they're going to go back a year from now and there's going to be a bigger church because of the authority that they had. And that's like a very, you know, uh, not a lot of people had been talking about that then. Now, maybe more. Right. But but the whole idea of of regional territorial warfare uh, was was not an easy pill for some Christians to swallow. (laughs) Right. Well, you know, we we kind of pioneered that here back in the 1980s. We moved into an area that was in the state of Florida, one of the poorest counties in the state of Florida. We were number 64 out of 67 counties in Florida all the way through the year 2000. And uh, the Lord gave us some prayer strategies through intercession in the year 2000. Within 18 months, we were named, instead of one of the poorest counties, we were named one of the richest real estate markets in the continental United States. And uh, and uh, today, um, we are one of four of the fastest growing counties in America today. Amazing. And um, and so we have seen absolute transformation in our area. We are now the top revenue producing county in the state of Florida. So we went from being the poorest county to now one of the top revenue producing counties in the entire state of Florida. That oh, doesn't right. just happen um, in 20 years because somebody's got a good development plan. It right. happens because we broke the atmosphere open. God gave mm-hmm. us prophetic words. He showed us how to pray, gave us a strategy. And over time, we implemented that strategy. We went from having the worst school systems in the state to now we're ranked third in the state. We went from having the worst sheriff's department in the state to now we've got one of the number one, number two um, sheriff's departments in the state. 
because when we actually pray and speak and, and prophesy and decree into a spiritual atmosphere, it creates an open heaven. But then what we need to understand is that we can pull that open heaven down and bring transformation into the earth. So right. some of these concepts might be, might be new for some of the people that are listening, but this is exactly why you need school of the prophets mm -hmm. because right. what you and I are talking about, I can share basically most churches today and they understand it now because mm -hmm. God's been unfolding and revealing this new level of authority that he's giving right. to his church. And the younger people are very drawn to this because worship has expanded so much and there's so many houses of prayer now and people are going there to pray and intercede and listen and even prophetic songs that are coming forward that that they can relate to, that that stay with them during the course of their job and during the week when things are tough, they're hearing it. And now they realize, oh, yeah, there really is warfare around music. The devil can use it and, and God clearly can use it. Right. I don't know if there are any closing thoughts because I know you have a conference that you're going to be doing later tonight and I could talk all day, as you know, and <laughs> I won't, I promise. You and I, you and I enjoy these conversations. Well, let me just say that of two of my favorite scriptures on the prophetic, Psalms 29, verse 4, says the voice of the Lord is powerful. And um, that is the Hebrew word koach, and it means the voice of the Lord is a force. So whatever it is that you're hitting up against, you need the voice of God to help you break through. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when we come to schools of the prophets and intensified times of training, it, it basically presses us forward into a new spiritual dimension of operation that gives the capacity for that voice to break through. Mm -hmm. There's another scripture in Isaiah 30, verse 31, that says the voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. And so the prophetic is, it, it's, a, it's a tool that connects us to the heart of God, but it's also a tool that gives us the capacity to use it as a weapon of war against the enemy. And so I think that there's not a person listening that doesn't have spiritual enemies and that doesn't have things that we're having to press through and overcome right mm -hmm. now. But I'm telling you what we've got to have in the midst of those battles or in the midst of a crisis or in the midst of a challenge is you've got to have an ability to hear what God is saying. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just close by saying in um, in first Samuel chapter 30, um, this is something that I that I have been preaching on the beginning of the year is that, you know, David came back to his camp at Ziklag and the Amalekites had stolen everything. It was a time of massive crisis. Um, they'd stolen David, David's wives, his children, all of his men's wives and children, all their stuff, all their produce, all their flocks, all their possessions, the enemy had stolen it. And it was such a desperate situation that the David's men wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. And so David's next words were, bring me an ephod. Mm -hmm. And the ephod was a ceremonial um, garment that enabled them to tune in to hear the voice of God with a greater clarity. And David said, bring me an ephod. In the middle of a crisis, in the middle of devastation, he said, I need to hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And he went to God and he said, Lord, what do I do? Do I go after him? And the Lord said, you'll, you shall surely pursue them and you'll overtake them and you'll recover all. Amen. So I really believe that that's part of the word for this year is pursue, overtake, and recover all. But you've got to have the voice of God in your spirit showing you what that looks like, mm -hmm. showing you the prophetic steps, the prophetic acts that you need to have to go after what the enemy has stolen, what the enemy is mm -hmm. warring against you with. And David didn't just take back what was stolen from him. He took back all the spoils, all the possessions of the Am uh, Amalekites so that he had plenty to share and to give to others. And so I believe it's that kind of a season for us. And we're not going to really um, survive the way that we should uh, mm -hmm. without hearing the voice of God. We're not going to be able to possess the, the promise that God's given to us without us having a capacity to hear God's voice. Yeah, I remember you teaching on Numbers as well, Numbers 11. Uh, it says, I will come down and speak with you and I will take some of the spirit that is on you God speaking to Moses now, and put that spirit on them, the people serving. And then they will help you bear the burden of the people so that you don't have to bear it by yourself. And then some people prophesied that they were worried. No, I'm not sure that they're they're, they're legit, right? And, and they came back and said to Moses, they're prophesying. And he said, oh, no, would that all the Lord's people were prophets. Right. <laughs> the Lord just put a spirit on all of them. Like, we're not we're not short on profits. We want to activate it in everybody because we could all use this gift. 
to different levels. You don't have to be giving prophetic words to people necessarily to be more discerning. So could, would you mind just closing out by just praying for this event that we're going to have coming up and whatever the Lord has on your heart, you know? Amen. Well, Father, we thank you, Lord, that the, the, uh, the answer to the Antichrist spirit is the anointing of Christ. Amen. And Lord, where this Northeast region has been a territory that the enemy has had its claws dug in, it's tried to declare its supremacy. Lord, we declare the supremacy of Christ over the Northeast. And we thank you, Lord, that where the enemy has been very busy with his voice, trying to control the narrative over the major cities of the Northeast part of our nation. I thank you, Father God, that you're releasing your prophetic voice out of the mouth of your people. And that as the voice of the Lord goes forth, it shatters the enemy. I thank you, Father God, that these events are not just going to be teaching events, but they're going to be filled with impartation, but also they're going to be filled with the activation that's going to cause a penetration in the spirit. And so, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the school, the prophets in the Northeast. I thank you, Father God, for just giving people ears to hear, to answer the call, to come and participate with these classes, because I believe God is going to catapult the body of Christ in that region up to a whole new place of spiritual gift operation, spiritual warfare, but also the anointing for breakthrough and transformation. We decree that and I bless the people now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Send our regards to everybody. We'll do. Vision Church, Christian International. Give Love my regards guys. to Trisha. Sure will. See you Love soon. All righty. Blessings. Bye-bye.